And Shay, everybody. Uh, my name is Jasmine Jack, and um, we will be discussing the A word today. So before we get into it, I would like everyone to um, do a poll. Um, we're going to be just getting um, kind of a idea of who our audience is today. Um, if you're in a group, please let us know how many youth and adults are attending. And if you're an adult, just let us know you're a single adult um, or a youth by yourself. Um, so we will go ahead and do that and please answer that. Just waiting a minute for those results to come back. Oh, excuse me. Oh no. <laughs> Jumped ahead. All right, do we happen to have those poll results? Okay, so it looks like um, it's about half and half, a little bit more, more adults than youth. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started and I'll let Jasmine Buckley take over right now. And Shay, everyone, we thank you for coming to our webinar. Um, this webinar is a part of our Muskogee Talks Mental Health. Um, it's called The A Word. Um, and for today, uh, we are a part of the Muskogee Nation Youth Services. Um, our mission is empowering Muskogee youth by connecting to culture, community, and resources. Um, we do all that by fostering advocacy, providing resources, promoting civic duty, um, encouraging wellness, which we are doing today by talking about mental health and talking about the A word and uh, by creating support. And so we're going to move on to the next slide. I'll go ahead and let Jasmine, Jack. All right, so um, just some reminders. Um, you probably will see this little bar at the bottom if you move your cursor around. Um, so with a little arrow right here, it's pointing to the Q&A. Um, so with that one, if you have any questions, uh, please respond into that, any general questions. But um, also, we might be asking you questions throughout this webinar. Um, so once we do that, and if you're going to reply to our questions, please use a chat button. That will be great. Um, okay, now we'll go ahead and turn it over to the next one. All right, we're going to introduce ourselves. And so you've probably seen that we're both Jasmine and Jasmine. Um, so my name is Jasmine Jack. I'm a youth service specialist and I'm also um, a proud youth council member. Um, I've been working with youth services from the beginning since 2015. Um, I recently became full-time um, almost about a year now. Okay. And I am Jasmine Buckley. I am the youth mentor for our office. Um, I also play like a dual role of being part of our youth council. And so we're gonna go ahead and move it on to our next slide. So uh, what is anxiety? So I'm gonna ask you guys to go ahead in the chat, um, give us some examples of what you think anxiety is uh, either to you or if you wanna put a definition, uh, feel free to put a definition or examples. So uh, just sign off in the chat room uh, about what is anxiety to you. And we'll give you guys a couple of minutes. So we have fear and worry. Mm -hmm. Those are some good examples. Fear and nervousness. 
anxious, yes. Anybody else have anything they want to say? Unsure? Oh, I like that one, unsure. It is a sense of overwhelm based on, upon the individual. Not feeling good enough? Mm, yeah. So those are all great examples of what uh, anxiety may be, uh, either for you or even for uh, somebody that you know. And so the basic definition of what anxiety is, it is a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. I know right now we're going through a pretty chaotic time with um, the coronavirus, and I'm sure a lot of us are feeling uncertain about what the outcome is about this virus. Um, you know, is it going to be longer? Is it going to last until like the summer? Is it going to even last until the end of the year? Um, and I know a lot of the symptoms, it seems like there's a new symptom of the coronavirus almost like every other month that's coming out. So I'm sure a lot of us are feeling that, that fear, that anxiousness, and uh, being unsure of what the outcome is for this. Sorry. All right. So and we're going to talk about um, regular anxiety versus anxiety disorder. So regular anxiety, um, it's kind of more um, your normal reaction to stress. So financial issues, um, your work, you know, trying to meet those deadlines at work, uh, your family life, uh, you know, have so much to do, so much on your plate, um, your health. Um, also, it kind of triggers that fight or flight response. And I'm sure most of you know it, uh, know what that is. Um, a good example of that um, I was told was it was just like facing a bear. Um, so are you going to stay and fight the bear or are you going to run off? That's kind of like regular anxiety, you know, it gets your adrenaline going, gets you kind of amped up. So anxiety disorder, um, it affects one in three adolescences, <clears throat> excuse me, adolescents and 6% six six are severely affected. And I really want to say that um, by severely, we mean that um, it affects a person's ability to love, live and laugh. So it affects their day-to-day -day things that they do. Um, and they can have um, a prolonged uh, or increased um, feelings and thoughts of worriness and things. And they also can have emotional and social and physical changes. So, and some examples of emotional, um, <laughs> excuse me, of uh, emotional changes are things like you're being on edge, you're irritable, you're having um, unexplained outbursts. Um, and then some social ones are in youth uh, or even in adults. So school performance is down, the work performance is down. Um, they're kind of avoiding everything. So avoidance, they're um, avoiding hanging out with their friends, with their family, they're feeling really isolated. Um, they're just not wanting to do the things that you know that they enjoy. And also some physical things um, are headaches, or migraines, they just happen so often and then they're just so bad. Um, a big thing in youth is stomach problems. So um, I know a lot of youth say that when they're nervous, they're, you know, they get butterflies or their stomach hurts. Um, that's a big sign of anxiety, um, especially if people don't realize it. And then unexplained um, body aches and pains and then just extreme fatigue. So just to kind of go a little bit further into about, about what the emotional, social, and physical changes that um, Jasmine Jack just touched upon, um, here are I, what I would think would be the main symptoms of anxiety. I know for me personally, I deal with anxiety. I started developing it, I think about like a year ago. And a lot of these symptoms were what I experienced. Um, you can experience restlessness and a feeling of being on edge, always kind of having that butterfly feeling and that uh, touch of adrenaline and never really coming down from it. Um, uncontrollable feelings of worry. Um, you may experience those um, outbursts. Um, you don't know where it is, don't know um, where it's coming from. You just 
all of a sudden just, I guess, moody and experiencing all these different emotions, um, like the increased ir irritability, um, always feeling touchy, always feeling um, in a bad mood, I guess. You always kind of have to tell people, you know, be careful what you say about me, I'm not feeling so well today. Um, concentration difficulties, um, that was a big one for me. It, I was always focused on that anxiety, that anxious uneasiness feeling in my stomach. And it was always hard for me to focus on what I was doing, whether if it was uh, at home or if I was at school, um, couldn't concentrate on anything but trying to calm myself down and trying not to have my anxiety go into a full-blown uh, panic attack. Um, sleep difficulties, such as problems falling or staying asleep. That right there was another big thing. Um, I experienced uh, pretty bad insomnia. There's some times where I would only get like one hour of sleep or I wouldn't even sleep at all because of always having those thoughts running in my head, running rampant. And it, it could be something that was like years and years ago that just all of a sudden popped in my head and I overthought it and thinking, oh, did I say something wrong? Did I say something that could offend them? You know, just having all these symptoms of anxiety um, really can send somebody over the edge and really trying to recognize those symptoms and getting a hold of it uh, can really help um, prevent that anxiety. I also want to add it on to that, like the restless, restlessness. Um, a lot of people, they bounce their leg a lot or they tap their fingers or I have a bad habit of I bite my inside of my lip or my cheek um, and those things are I fidget, you know, fidgeting. Um, those are signs of restlessness and that can also be because of difficulty with sleeping and then thing that helps me a lot with that is um, I have a little fidgeter and once my mind's busy and it kind of concentrate on something else, then I can kind of usually get the tasks I need to be done. So those things do help me a lot. Okay, and now we're going to go into some causes and factors. So we have your environmental stressors. <clears throat> we have relationship and family issues. Um, so you might have, you know, issues with your parents or with your people, uh, people you're staying with, um, pressure to succeed. Um, right now, we live in a culture of achievement, so it seems like everything we do, we have to achieve and go in above and beyond. Well, that's not um, a horrible thing. That's a great thing to do, you know, to, to do achievements, but your achievement um, may not be, you think may not be as good as the next person's achievement, but it's your achievement. You shouldn't compare your achievements to others because it's your achievement. It's individual to yourself. And then also we, sometimes people think we live in a world that feels threatening or scary with all the school shootings going on um, and then those increase in drills and things going on in the schools. Um, that's really scary, um, especially for youth being in those and then parents and family members and friends aren't there for them, you know, and those things happen or even, um, you know, terrorist attacks or camps, um, all those things are scary. And then social media, that's a big one. And I know me being a youth, I feel like that's a big one and we always hear it and it's kind of an eye roll sometimes, but the truth is it really is a stressor because what, what we do is we compare our lives to these people on Instagram and you know Twitter and it's like, they don't even really live like that half the time. It's Photoshopped or they're making it that way. Um, so that's just, that's really hard on some people. And then sometimes our genetic and um, brain chemistry. So it's a chemical imbalance and we can't help that. There's nothing wrong with us. Um, it just, it happens sometimes. And then we have uh, medical factors. So such as different diseases, the effects of medication or the stress of an intensive surgery or prolonged recovery. Um, so some people, I know knee surgery and back surgery, it comes to mind. Um, that puts people out for a long period of time because you know they can't do the weight bearing thing uh, exercises on their knees or activities and they need really a lot of rest so that can be a big stressor because how are they going to you know uh, they have insurance how are they can pay for that how are they going to pay for their other bills and things okay 
and then withdrawal from an illicit substance. So that's things like stimulants such as heroin and um, amphetamines, and then also things that aren't like illicit per se, but that can definitely um, add to anxiety, um, withdrawal, or actually doing it um, and taking them is caffeine and nicotine. Um, nicotine is a stimulant, and so is caffeine. So if you drink so much of that, you know, that trigger your trigger anxiety. Um, I know I am very sensitive to caffeine, even though I drink pop, uh, but if I drink like Coke or Mountain Dew, while it's high caffeine intake, I can kind of feel my jittery, I get jittery or energy drinks. Uh, they send me over the top. I'm just, I talk fast anyway. And then I talk like a hundred miles an hour after the fact. So you can definitely tell whenever um, I have an energy drink. So now that we talked about the symptoms and some of the causes and factors of anxiety, uh, we're going to touch up on the treatment and prevention of it. Uh, the number one uh, thing that I think is important is physical health, um, exercising, nutrition, and getting good sleep. Um, that can really help um, calm your nerves, calm yourself down, um, especially with exercising, releasing those endorphins and really making yourself uh, feel good. Um, mental health, um, there is counseling, which I think is a great way for you to get something off of your chest uh, for um, with a trusted person, uh, somebody who's actually like certified in helping somebody with uh, mental health and with mental illnesses. Um, that's and especially if you don't really want to say anything to your family or your friends, you're afraid of being judged, you can always do counseling. Um, medication. Medication is another great way to help uh, cope with your anxiety, to help from your nerves uh, rising up. And also avoiding alcohol and drugs. Um, Jasmine just touched upon uh, just in the previous slide about illicit substances, how those can really cause um, your anxi anxiety to kick up, same as with the nicotine and caffeine. Um, really avoiding all of those uh, really help subside your anxiety. Um, Self-care, that is extremely important to take care of yourself. Um, going through stress management, really finding those things that can really help release that stress and to really um, feel good about yourself. Um, relaxation techniques, um, maybe yoga, maybe um, doing some meditation. Um, and your support network. I know for me, that's a, a big thing of going to my mom or my sister. Those two are the main people, um, even my dad, especially my dad, he really understands what I go through because um, when he was younger, he experienced anxiety uh, himself. Um, even my mom, she recently, she went through a panic attack and it was scary for her. And so going to them and really talking about um, what I'm going through and even some of the problems that <clears throat> maybe they are causing, I guess, per se, maybe if they're uh, come at me a certain way, really talking to them and letting them know um, they really helped me um, go through that. And my sister, she recognizes when I'm about to go into a full panic attack and she'll just come to me and be like, hey, you're okay. You know, uh, you're doing fine. Let's go do this. Let's go take something off of your mind from that, from it getting out of control. So next we have some um, prevention, so some preventative factors. So like Jasmine stated, you know, talking to a trusted um, person. So mental health care, family and community support, problem solving skills, um, cultural and religious beliefs. So mental health care, that doesn't have to be necessarily, um, it's good and it's highly recommended to go to counseling or to seek somebody to talk to, to get help that way. But also it could be, you know, taking a walk in nature, um, being around your family, family and community support. Um, I know with my community that I think support me a lot is youth council. Um, 
they're friends, but they became family and they're one of my biggest support systems that I have. Um, and then problem solving skills. Um, sometimes when we're anxious or stressed, we don't have the best problem solving skills at the time. We don't cope well. Um, so it's good to get assistance with that or just to take uh, to step back and then reflect. And then um, cultural and religious beliefs, um, those are some great things. They will help people a lot. Um, and a lot of people find comfort in their church, um, in their ceremonial grounds, you know, in their um, mikos, ceremonial leaders. Um, people find great comfort in that. Um, so right now, I just wanna ask everybody a question. We'll take a few seconds to answer it. I just wanted to know, um, so ask some preventative factors. What are um, some ways everybody is keeping their normalcy during this um, quarantining time? Uh, for me, I'm trying to just keep my sleep schedule on track. Um, it's, it's here and there sometimes that helps a lot and just putting so if you guys want to answer in the chat, whatever you guys are doing. We got a comment, thank you for that. Oh, someone said daily, no phone or tablet time. That's, that's really good. Gives you time to be with yourself and others. All right, we'll go. Oh, yoga, fishing. Oh yeah, outdoors. Definitely getting enough sleep and maintain a routine and schedule throughout the day. Yeah, that helps a lot. All right, we'll go ahead and go on to the next slide. Um, before that, um, I want everybody. We're going to do one more question. Uh, we're going to do a poll, um, and I want. Uh, to have all the youth on the line think of a trusted adult they could talk to, and then all the adults think back to a time when they were a youth they had somebody to talk to when dealing with mental health crisis. gonna wait a few seconds for the poll results all right so both the youth and uh, adults y'all both answered 100 percent. that's great that's really great i know i have a trusted adult well i have a few people that i know i can trust so and now i'll take it over hand it over to jasmine for the next slide Oh, sorry. So now we're going to talk about some communication methods. Um, the first one is talking with a trusted adult. Um, that's what we touched on upon a couple of our slides um, for yourself uh, and for your friend. Um, I just want to ask real quick, um, you can sign off in the chat about, um, let's see. Oh, wait, never mind, we already covered that. What am I thinking? <laughs> Sorry. Um, encouraging a friend to ask or to seek help. Um, if you really see a friend that is going through something, um, it's important for them to get help, um, not only for themselves, but I think it'll make yourself feel good knowing that your friend is getting taken care of and tackling uh, their anxiety. One uh, line that Creek Nation has, or one program that we have is the Muskogee Creek Nation Behavioral Health. Um, their phone number is listed on their slide. It's 918-758-1930. Um, they have tons and tons of services. I know my sister in the past, she had to use them. Um, I also have a cousin who right now she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and she uh, weekly goes to uh, behavioral health counseling that they have and she knows or she's told me that that really helps her 
uh, tackling with her bipolar disorder and they're always kind to her and always treated her very well. Another one is technology. I know a lot of us have cell phones or even um, have internet access. Um, another service that Creek Nation has is a texting line. Um, you can text Creek to 741741. Um, it pulls up, uh, I believe it's like a counselor and they, you can usually tell them, you know, what's going on if you're about to have a, a panic attack or not even just with anxiety, maybe you're dealing with um, not so good thoughts, maybe um, like my cousin going through bipolar disorder, maybe you're feeling that you're about to go through an episode, um, really talking to them, um, they can help you um, talk, talk along with you, to talk you down with your anxiety or any other mental illness. Um, we also have a call in line at 1-800-273-TALK, which is 8255. Um, again, that's uh, mostly kind of like a counseling system where you can talk with somebody about um, what you're maybe experiencing at the moment. I just want to add on to Jasmine, um, so since, to what Jasmine's stating, since this communication, <clears throat> excuse me. Looks like we lost Jasmine for a second. We're going to get her back on the line. We were talking a little bit about resources um, and I did put an additional link in the chat that will take you to our Muskogee Youth um, website. And I'm going to go ahead and just share that for you guys so you can see it while we're waiting for Jasmine to get back in. I kind of want to ask everybody to um, maybe you're a part of a different tribe or maybe um, you are a non-tribal member. Where what are some resources that you may know um, to help somebody dealing with uh, mental illnesses? Um, just sign off in the chat and share that with everyone. Um, so maybe those who don't have resources um, will know who they uh, can get a hold of or what they can turn to. Good. And while you're entering those um, items in the chat, if you can see these pages actually here with the yellow ribbons were developed by our behavioral health program and it's broken down um, by the various counties within our jurisdiction. Um, and there's actually at the top of each of those is the 1-800-273-TALK, which is a national line. Um, but that's also provides you with some local resources. And then if you scroll on down below, we have additional online resources um, that include our behavioral health services, the crisis text line, suicide prevention line, and then other really great resources. Looks like we might have Jasmine back with us. Nope, not yet. I just thought she was there. Jasmine Buckley, do you want to see if there's any um, input from the chat box as far as other resources that folks can access? If you can unmute yourself. There you go. Looks like we didn't have anybody yet. Okay. Okay. I yeah. We didn't get to it, that's no problem. But um, there's lots of resources out there though. And even if you call 211 or if you go to 211.org um, on a website, that is a nationwide number that can also connect you to local resources. Um, so it's out there and available. Um, I know you guys were close to the beginning. Jasmine may be having some technical issues. Otherwise, I think she'd be back in already. Um, Jasmine, if you wanna go ahead and talk just kind of about the, like kind of rounding out where you guys were at, um, at resources and then um, moving on from there. Okay. Um, well, it looks like we covered everything for uh, our communication, our resources. Um, again, uh, talking with the trusted adult for yourself and for your friend, um, encouraging your friend to seek help, 
um, which you can go for at the Muscogee Creek Nation Behavioral Health at 918-758-1930. And also our technology, we have the texting line. If you text Creek, that's C-R-E-E-K to 741-741 or even calling in at 1-800-273-TALK, which is 1-800-273-8255. Good deal. And I'm just gonna wanna show one more thing before um, we conclude. Oh, maybe that's her. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Yay, Jasmine made it back. <laughs> we were finishing talking up about the resources, Jasmine. Um, let's get you unmuted if there's any additional information that you want to. Um, talk about before we close out. We were getting ready to just kind of do the final information. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry. I was like, I thought I was unmuted. Uh, sorry. Talking about the A word right now. Mine's capital A. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, sorry. Where were we at? You said the resources? Yeah, we showed them our website. We talked about um, the resources available from the tribe and two on one, those kind of things. Um, so I think unless there's any additional information that you need to include, um, just kind of um, directing them how to contact us. Yeah, just a, a reminder, we're going to have a survey at the end. So if y'all please do that, um, that will be great. And then um, we'll have this recording and of my glitches too. And we'll send the slides to anyone who wants them. And just a reminder for everyone to stay safe and healthy, uh, wash your hands. Um, yeah, sorry. No problem. Let's, let's, we didn't actually ask for questions. That's the one thing we forgot. So let's go ahead and do that at this time. We do have some folks who've called in, and so I'm going to unmute the people who have called in on their phones. So if you um, have questions and you're on the phone line, we'll let you um, say those out to us. If you are calling in with your camera, and so it really ends up turn them even more negative because there's no follow through. So um anybody on any of the lines have questions for our panelists? Um, if you want to shout those out or if you want to put it in the chat, I'll give you time to ask those questions of them. And you can unmute your own lines. I've allowed everybody to talk, I think. But it's moving slowly. I'm not seeing any questions in the chat. So go ahead and conclude our presentation. I want to thank Jasmine and Jasmine for doing such a great job. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. There might be a question here. Not a question. Just enjoy the webinar. Thanks for attending. We do want to thank everyone for participating today. Um, like Jasmine said, we'll have the slides available and a recording of the webinar. Um, if you need to reach our program, you can contact us at 918-549-2557. We are answering calls from remote distance locations. Um, and we're also available by email. And you can actually go to our website, which is muskogeeyouth.com. And we spell that M-V-S-K-O-K-E, just like on the logo that you see there. Um, it's muskogeeyouth.com. You can find all of our contact information, our email, our phone numbers. Um, and then also I wanna direct you to our events page. When you go to our website, um, we have some other webinars that we're organizing over the next couple of months. Um, hopefully not that long, but as long as Corona keeps us at home, we're going to be keep, do keep doing this. Um, but you can look at our calendar. We do have a webinar in a couple of weeks with the higher education program. So we'll be talking to them about some of their services. Um, and then we have some additional um, presentations that we are working on and all of them will be listed on our events page. So keep tabs there, watch our social media. Thanks again for attending. We appreciate everyone. Thanks again, Jasmine. Jasmine, you did a great job. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Meadow, thank you for the compliments. Yes, thank you.